Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at Wander, the Cult of Barnacle Bay. Quick disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this game. I hadn't heard of Wander, it slipped under the radar for me, but both Will from The Hungry Gamer and Colin from our own channel recommended it highly, especially for solo play and playing with my son. So was this campaign dungeon crawler a hit, or were the mechanics a little too light? Let's find out and get to the list. My number five leans pro for me, but it might leave some heavier gamers wanting, and that's how the enemies activate in the game. Enemy turns couldn't be simpler in Wander. When a group of enemies activate, they either attack someone that they can attack, or they move generally a single space and then try to attack. And something I personally love whenever I see it in these kinds of games, their attacks have a set damage value, so the only ones that have to roll and have maybe good or bad luck are the players to defend. Another cool design choice, something I don't think I've ever seen before, is that when multiple enemies of the same type attack the same character, they combine all their damage into one single tough to defend attack. And that has really cool ramifications for your tactical choices. So again, even though the enemy AI is basic, there's more going on than it might seem. But I do want to be clear, if you're a heavy dungeon crawl fan looking for the varied AI of sword and sorcery or kingdom death monster, you're not going to get that here. Even the bosses with their unique AI decks tend to do the same thing pretty frequently. We have another full-on pro at number four, probably my favorite unique mechanic in the game, and that's how they handle initiative. Each player character in enemy unit will have a card on the initiative track, and this already gives a lot of fun tactical choices, because enemies will break ties for who they attack based on who's higher on the track, and you can spend your turn to move to the top or bottom of the track, kind of like delaying your turn, but you really up the ante when you flip the initiative board to the advanced side, which I fully recommend, in that every initiative spot will have a bonus to defense or movement or attack, and the enemies get those bonuses too, so now you're not only switching around your initiative to try to protect people, but also to make sure that you get the right bonuses and the enemies don't. It's a fun little additional puzzle added on to the basic tactical gameplay, something I really enjoy. We're moving on to a mix for my number three, and that's the way characters progress both within a given scenario and within the campaign overall. In a single scenario, characters progress basically identically to Zombicide. For every enemy they defeat, they gain experience, and this system has the exact same positives and negatives that I've covered previously in Zombicide videos, in that it does give you a fun dynamic feeling in each mission, but often things aren't balanced fully, so you might always go one way or the other and it can be frustrating to feel like you have to kind of slow yourself down so others can catch up in their leveling. But on the larger scale of progression for the whole campaign, things are also kind of mixed because since the leveling has to be scenario by scenario, the only progression you get are through items. And I will say these items get really cool, especially in the second and third act of the game when they get really powerful abilities but they also aren't as varied as I would like. They don't really have enough tools in such a simple combat system to give you a ton of crazy effects. So it's kind of cool to level up with items, but not like super exciting. So again, it ends up a little bit in the middle. And speaking of campaign progression, the branching campaign itself is my number two, and again, it's a mix, although it leans pro. On the potentially negative side, the narrative here is just okay, and except for at the beginning, it tends to get out of the way quickly, which actually could be positive for you if you just want to play the game and don't want to read 15 pages of text. But as for the campaign structure itself, you have basically three missions in each of the three acts, but usually you have two or three choices for each of those. So if you want to play through the campaign again, with somebody else or with different characters, you'll get to see very different scenarios, different challenges, hear different story elements. It's pretty cool. But the scenarios themselves do walk that fine line between pro and mix. They're sometimes quite varied, but sometimes you see the same elements being repeated. I do like that they're super simple to set up, and they use kind of the mice and mystic idea of flipping from above ground to below ground. That's pretty cool. But all that said, they're just good, not amazing, not incredible in their variety, just pretty solid. 
Finally, for our number one, we're looking at the choices in the core skirmish combat gameplay. And again, this sort of leans mix or pro for me, but it might depend on your preferences for dungeon crawlers. The potentially negative side here is just that the game is so simple. You don't have that many different actions to do. Usually there's not that many enemies engaged with you and you don't tend to have that much time pressure in most of the scenarios. But that's exactly where the combat kind of slips into the pro camp for me because it's so accessible, so clean, so quick to resolve that missions can be finished in 40 or 45 minutes and it's still a lot of fun. The dice are exploding dice so you can have crazy runs of luck where you just blow enemies away and that's a lot of fun and again the enemy defense is a static value so you never have to roll for the enemies for anything. It's a clean system but it might be too simple of a system for you. Kind of going back to the enemy activations. Overall, I enjoyed Wander pretty well. It wasn't a huge hit for me because I wanted something a little bit deeper, but it was really nice how quick it was to play and my son really enjoyed it and it was simple to teach to him. And I think that's really where my recommendation is going to fall for this one. If you love Zombicide and don't find that too simplistic, or if you think you might play this with your significant other who's a casual gamer or with your uh, son or daughter, then I think Wander could be a huge hit. But if you're looking for something heavy something more puzzly or a really heavy narrative experience like if you're gonna play it with your Gloomhaven or Madara group I think this will be a miss for you good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop